Hello and welcome to lesson 4 of data representation, computer system which looks at storing graphics. Ah, a little bit of revision from the last lesson just to start off. What does int2? What does ASCII mean? And describe how text is actually stored by a computer system. If you're a higher candidate, you should be able to answer what is a Unicode? Second higher question, describe one advantage that Unicode has over ASCII. Final revision question, state one disadvantage that Unicode has, sorry, one disadvantage of Unicode over ASCII. Answers to revision questions are, ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and the method by which text is stored is that each value has a unique ASCII value, and this is stored in binary by the computer. Higher, Unicode is a 16-bit system of representing text, Question two, as it's 16 bits instead of 8 bit, the big advantage is it can represent more characters than languages. However, the downside of this is that it does take up more space than ASCII values. So, lesson aims for int2. Futiles at int2 will be able to describe how a computer system stores a black and white bitmap image. It should also describe how they calculate the storage requirements of a black and white bitmap image. And explain the terms pixel, DPI and resolution. In addition to all the two outcomes, higher should be able to describe how a computer system stores a black and white, grayscale, and color bitmap image, and also calculate the storage requirements of the above. Describe what is meant by true color, and describe the relationship between bit depth and file size. Should also be able to discuss the vector method of storing graphics, discussing relative advantages and disadvantages of vector and bitmap, and describe how graphic files can be compressed. So let's look at a bitmap picture. On the left hand side here, you have a picture of my dog. Now, if you zoomed in close enough, I've tried to help a bit by putting grid lines there, just to see that the whole image is made up of individual pixels. Now, pixel actually stands for picture element. A bitmap image stores each individual pixel. At int2, you only need to understand black and white images. These are constructed as follows. So if you have a very basic pixel on, on the left, which is 8 by 8, you can see that every time there's a white pixel, a white pixel corresponds to a 0. Every time there's a black pixel, that corresponds to a 1. Now the important thing is that each and every pixel is stored, whether or not it's white or black. So no matter how many, even if I change everything to black or everything to white, it will still take the same amount of file storage. Now, if I increase the amount of pixels from 8 by 8 there to 16 by 16, you'll see that hopefully you understand I've been able to make a clearer picture. However, that means I've increased the resolution of the image. Increasing the resolution means I've taken more pixels to make up the image, which does give me a clearer, more detailed picture, but however, does increase the storage size. Now, you're often asked in exam conditions to calculate the storage requirements of a black and white bitmap image. The steps to this are as follows. You need to find the amount of pixels wide by the amount of pixels high. This answer would be in bits. And you then convert the number in its appropriate units, either kilobytes or megabytes. And again, just dividing it until it's in an appropriate. So, for example, a black and white image is 800 pixels by 900 pixels. So if you were to calculate the storage requirements for this and express the answer in an appropriate unit, you would multiply 800 by 900, that gives you 720,000 bits. And the important thing is, it is in bits. Converting into an appropriate unit, so if I divide it by 8 to get it in bytes, 90,000 bytes doesn't mean a great deal. So divide it by 1,024 again to get it into kilobytes. Then that would be fine. So 87.89 kilobytes. Avoid rounding off until towards the end. However, occasionally, what they will do is they'll give you the size of the image in actual length and give you the resolution of the image. Now, they will either say there's X amount of pixels per inch, or they will say it's a 4 by 6 image with a resolution of 300 dpi. Now what you have to do here is still the same. You still have to work out the amount of pixels long by the amount of pixels down. So what, so what we'll do is we work out the length by doing 4 times 300. That means we've got 1,200 pixels length. Multiply it by 6 times 300, which is the breadth times the resolution again. So that's 
1200 times 1800 and that gives us approximately 2,160,000 bits. Convert to an appropriate unit, divided by 8 is in bytes. Again though, that wouldn't make a great deal, you would convert that down into kilobytes. So again, dividing by 1024. If it was still too big, again, you would convert it again. So to summarise, bitmap images store every single pixel. In a black and white image, one bit for each pixel, zero for white, one for black. Resolution is the amount of pixels that make up an image. Now higher resolutions means you have a more detailed image, but does mean that it stores more information, so the file size is larger. Now looking at the higher material. So in addition to the int2, who should you should be happy enough with black and white images we will now look at color bit bitmaps as well so you're able to calculate the storage requirements of grayscale or color bit bitmap you should be able to describe what's meant by true color and describe the relationship between bit depth and file size describe the vector method of storing graphics and describe how graphic files can be compressed so color bitmaps the color bitmap method is exactly the same as for black and white with one difference each pixel is not black and white, but can represent a variety of colours. Now, each pixel has a binary value representing the colour. The amount of colours is known as the bit depth. So an image with 8-bit colour depth, if you look at an 8-bit binary number, 8 bits in binary, the largest decimal number is 255. So remember, we start counting from 0, so that does mean that we can store 256 colours. Now, true color is defined as an image of 24 bit color depth. That means that you can't actually store in any one pixel any one of 16,777,216 colors. The true color, as I say, is defined as a 24 bit image, and that does mean that approximately 16.7 million colors can be represented. Now, if you use any graphics programs, you will find that when you are choosing colors there's RGBs. Now those RGBs are actually values for red, green and blue because the color code for each pixel is, is derived of these three main add, add, additive colors. Now if you increase the bit depth this has a direct effect on the amount of colors that the image can represent. Higher color depth equals more colors. However that does come at a cost the file size will increase. So you have to bear that in mind. So let's work this do a few work storage examples. A true color image is 800 pixels by 900 pixels. And if you're asked to calculate the storage requirements and express the answers in appropriate units, step one, if you do length times breadth and multiply it by the bit depth. So we know it's 800 pixels by 900 pixels. And you multiply that by 24 bits. That gives us approximately 17.2 million bits. However, that is not a meaningful unit. So we need to convert it in an appropriate unit, basically until we get a value that looks sensible. So if we divide it in bytes by dividing into 8, still nil. Divide it by 1024 to get it in kilobytes. Again, 2109 kilobytes. So we divide that once more to get it into megabytes. So it adds our approximately 2.06 meg. An alternate storage space example. Sometimes, again, as for the int 2s, we will give them the size and the resolution of the image. So one way in which this can be measured, again, is DPI. So this is a 16-bit color image. It's 4 inches by 6 inches with a resolution of 300. It's exactly the same calculation as for the int 2s, which is length times DPI. However, you also have breadth times DPI as well. And this is the different part for higher, the bit depth part on the end. So you do 4 times 300 times 6 times 300, that will give you the amount of pixels. And you have to remember for each pixels, there is 16 bits. So that will give you 2,160,000 pixels multiplied by 16 equals 34,560,000 bits. And again, convert that into an approximate unit, and you would get approximately 4.119 megs. There are pros and cons of bitmaps. The advantages of bitmaps are they can be manipulated at a pixel level. 
you try and create the same image in a drawing package as you can in paint for example in paint you can manipulate on the pixel level for example um, if you look at Photoshop you can remove red eye etc uh, you can create a wide array of graphic effects such as water um, any effect given enough time in the complexity package you can represent photorealistic images using bitmaps now the disadvantage of bitmaps however are they do require large storage space because as mentioned earlier they do store every single bit and if you've noticed that when you scale an image i.e resize it if you go beyond a very small proportion the image does become very pixelated another method of representing graphics is to use a vector method this method is when an image is saved but only stores the attributes or, or the properties of each shape this is so that the image can be redrawn so attributes for the circle on this image may be radius, x coordinate, y coordinate, fill color, etc, etc. If we look at the whole made we me in the corner there, I have lost a little bit of weight. Um, the image below is an example of a vector image. So example of attributes for the eyes, which are ellipses, may be the center, the x, y coordinates, fill color, border style, border color, etc. That they do have advantages because it only stores the information on how to draw the image it does not lose quality when it's scaled. It does require less storage space, very easy to move and manipulate images even once they're made because you're manipulating them on the shape level. They are resolution independent. However, the, the cons of this are they cannot be edited at pixel level. You cannot manipulate an individual pixel level on a vector image. You cannot show photorealistic scenes and will usually require particular applications to open. Compression. I'm not going to cover too much of this, but basically, if you compress an image, the file size becomes less. Uh, so, for example, bitmaps and TIFFs, which are both um, image formats, are non compressed. Some methods are JPEG, uses very clever maths to analyze images in blocks of 8x8 pixels and selectively reduces the detail within each block. Now, if you over compress it, it can lead to what's known as artifacts and too much loss of detail. General zip files, which we will cover later on in the unit. Zip files attempt to compress files without loss of any information. Images won't down themselves too much in a general. Now, there are two main types of compression. Lossy compression. This is when detail from the file is removed. Uh, too much of this will reduce the quality too excessively. Now, lossless is usually when very clever algorithms are used to try and remove repeated data so that data can be stored in a far more efficient manner. So if we break this image down and we compress it using JPEG, using selectively more compression, what you should see is that at the minute, between slide one and slide two, very little change. However, we compress it again, you should notice a little bit more artifacts appearing. And if we continue that, the artifacts are very visible. And again, although the file sizes went down, that image is almost non-recognizable. So to summarize, higher bit depth is the amount of bytes that can represent the amount of colors in an image. True color equals 24 bit color depth with approximately 16.7 million colors. Increasing the bit depth increases the file size. Vector images store the attributes of its components. And compression, such as JPEGs, etc., will reduce the file size. Of